Well, uh, Mick, thanks a lot for inviting me. I think what you're doing over here is really super amazing. Uh, I mean, connecting people like that uh, from all over the world and you as entrepreneurs and sales guys. Uh, Mario gave us a favor to have a feel of <laughs> how many are on, on, on each side or in each of the groups. Um, I think there was a lot of energy and uh, a lot of uh, openness and sharing all over the world on this stage. A lot of V8 uh, engines happening over here. So I have very big shoes to fill. Um, actually, I realized that I'm probably the only guy, the only speaker from Poland, right? Or, or maybe even from, from Europe, right? Native, native Polish. Na native Polish, yeah. So I'm really hoping... No, no pressure, yeah. Ah, n nothing felt, but I really hope that my uh, you know, electric motor uh, will uh, make up with the efficiency and the content that I'm going to present uh, as compared to those big uh, V8s and energy that was over here. Um, so this is the question we're going to try to answer today. Uh, some of you are entrepreneurs, maybe you already have your sales guys, maybe not. Some of you are sales guys, just like Mario, and maybe you're going to be opening your own businesses. So maybe looking at it from a perspective of Doc Planner will open your eyes and there will be something very useful for you. Let's see. So very quickly about me. So I, I spent a lot of time in a corpo, uh, Unilever, you know the brand. Uh, then I was approached by Mariusz Gralewski, maybe some of you guys know him. Um, at least by the name or by the articles in Pulse Business and so on. So we built the first company together, Golden Line. Uh, that was quite some time ago. Uh, it was sold, as you know, to Agora, to a big media company. And at that time, we started another company, which is Doc Planner or Znane Lekas uh, here in Poland. So if you ask me in a nutshell, who am I? Uh, I would say professionally, I would say that I'm a co-founder of Doc Planner together with Mariusz and some other guys, and I'm a recruiter. I've recruited a whole bunch of guys in my life. Huh? Um, so here are a few experiences that I uh, have to share with you about that. If I were to give you a very quick answer about how to recruit the first salesperson and how to, how to recruit the 100th salesperson, that would be my answer. I mean, the, the least uh, damaging scenario of hiring the wrong first sales guy is that you will lose a little bit of time. Huh? and you will need to hire another one. Uh, the, the hardest scenario, the, the worst case scenario that you can imagine is that can, it can actually kill your company. And I know a couple of uh, companies like that. Huh? You're losing the competitive advantage because of the speed uh, to the market. You're burning some of the customers. The sales guy has to be there for some time to recruit the team and so on. So suddenly, if he fails, half of the team is gone, at least demotivated, if not leaving with the sales guy. Um, the second part, if you are about to recruit a, a 100 salesperson, then probably you know your stuff. You have a business model that is working, and it's really about doing it faster than anyone else, because probably, if you're that successful there, there might be someone else, there probably is, that also is pretty successful. So you better recruit your sales, guy fa sa sales, guy fa sales guys fast. Huh? Um, my learnings are dictated by the kind of business model that we have. So let me tell you very briefly about it. Uh, marketplace for doctors and patients. What we sell is an online calendar, basically, to doctors. And we do it via phone and via direct sales. Uh, has any one of you used uh, Znane Lekas ever? Raise your hand, please. Uh, I was hoping for much, much fewer hands raised. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of health problems, probably because of the weather, right? Uh, in Philippines, oh, maybe you have also some health problems there. Uh, maybe not related with the weather that much. Um, this is what happens when we enter a new country. So we entered a new country uh, six times. And this is the recruitment that has happened so far in the history of the planner for the last six years. Huh? Now, the countries that we entered and failed, they are not there on our map. And that's what I meant about recruiting the first sales guy very, very slow. We have an internal recruitment machine. Uh, that's what we really believe in. So we have uh, recruitment guys and, and, and HR guys in every country so that we are... I mean, there are a lot of people who would say, I know a lot of amazing recruitment consultants and executive search companies that can do the work for you. But I believe uh, is that uh, if 
you agree that recruiting and acquiring the great talent is like one of the core competencies, because if you recruit the right sales guys, your company is going to grow, it's going to scale, and so on and so on, then probably it's a good idea to have it in-house. Uh, just a glimpse on, on the results. And as I said, the countries where we failed, that's Hungary and Czech Republic. Uh, we hired the wrong first sales people, uh, country managers, and so on. So uh, they are not on the map anymore. And each of those countries that you can see, it kind of demonstrates. So we do have a lot of direct sales on the phone and in the field. So a lot, a lot in Doc Planner depends on sales. Uh, in total today, we have 350 salespeople, and more than half of them are sales. OK, so these are like really big questions to answer, and I really don't have all the answers, or I don't have the answers for all of you, but I really would like to um, share with you all the, let's say, hacks or tricks that I saw that worked for us, and maybe in a context they will work for you. Um, but before we do, let's define why we recruit the sales guys. Huh? We recruit, um, of course, to sell, but we also recruit for scaling. Huh? So um, what I mean by scaling is that the first person is able to be followed by the, by the next one and the next one and so on. So when it comes to recruiting the first sales guy, of course, we're talking about a sales manager or someone who can be a sales manager, who has potential to be one. Uh, when you're talking about the general sales guys, then it's about a certain culture fit and about certain efficiency and quality of the guy so that uh, the team can build uh, on a healthy basis. Huh? So the first question to answer, and uh, it's, uh, the, it's more difficult to answer it in the, first, uh, in the case of recruiting the first sales guy. So who am I really uh, looking for? Um, we'll get to that why. Um, of course, when you're, when you're considering, there's a lot of elements to think about. Huh? And as I said, it's not an encyclopedia that I can share everything with you and, and uh, have all the answers. However, uh, if you would ask me on this incomplete list of things that I look at, then of course the sales skills. I mean, if you're a founder and you're not selling yourself and you're looking for a salesperson, then probably this is what you're missing. Uh, it is connected with the profile of the person. And I don't know how much you have read or thought about what a successful profile of a salesperson looks like, and I'm not talking about experience. If you read uh, smart books, they will tell you that a successful salesperson is someone, for example, in between introversy and extroversy. You don't want someone who will uh, not have enough empathy to really give space for the customer, whether it's B2B or B2C. You know? So the profile of the person is super important. And finally, leadership skills. If you're having a company that is growing, then probably sooner or later, you will need more leaders in sales than fewer. And I have failed to recruit successfully mid-careers or sales managers into the org structure. They have all grown from within. So if you're hiring people, that's what I look at. Those three things, sales skills, profile, and team. Um, the first hack that I want to share with you uh, is how, how do you get started? It's, it's really, really, uh, you know, kind of tough. So we tried two things and they both uh, work. So first you can think about hiring an amazing sales guy with experience uh, in selling and also in leading a sales team. Many times it happens that he already has a network. I mean, if it's a successful sales guy for the last five or ten years, oh my God, he should have people who love him, right? He's a leader. He's not only a sales guy, so he, knew he should have somebody from his background to take on board. And then uh, that's how the structure can be built from there. Huh? Uh, on the other hand, we did a couple of times an experiment, let's call it like that. We did it in, um, in Spain. Uh, we acquired Dr. Alia so we couldn't kind of fire the founders and <laughs> you know, hire our own sales guy. So we had to do it in a slightly different way. So we decided to hire the first two sales guys. Why two, not one? It's very important because the feedback from one, only one salesperson, if it's a junior salesperson, it's going to be distorted in some way. Huh? It's going to be subjective. If you have two guys, you, or three or four, it's even better, but sometimes you just cannot afford. You get some seed funding like 100K or 50K or whatever. You really cannot afford to build like five or 10 people immediately. So the minimum I believe you should be able to start is two, uh, because that will give you 
a lot more objectivity, not only about you know, the response of the market to the product that you're selling, but also um, uh, about the, uh, the, the, the performance uh, and what is possible to, uh, to achieve. Huh? Uh, so uh, we did, we did hybrid, hybrid things as well. So um, uh, this is like one of the things that uh, got us really started in many markets. OK, um, the second hack, let's say, to share with you about sales guys, there are so many competencies, competency models and so on. You can read about this stuff. Uh, you have experience in, in big companies where those competency models are built. Uh, I believe in one single very important thing in sales guys, and that is um, being status or money driven. As hard as tough it might seem, as it might seem, that's true. And why is it so? Um, what I noticed, and I might be wrong, and of course, there, there, you, know, you can prove me wrong, actually, but from my experience, what I can see is that uh, the most successful sales guys, they want to prove to the world that they are unique in a certain way. What is the best way to prove that you are unique? Huh? I mean, you can wear a red hat all day <laughs> on the streets of Warsaw New York, but that's not the point. So money is needed in order to achieve that. So certain signs, material signs of status that you achieve are very important for uh, sales guys. And of course, when you're recruiting senior sales guys, they will never tell you in an interview that money is the main motivator for them. Of course not. Huh? But when you read between the lines, you should be able to see it. Huh? You should be able to hear from them that they have a holiday house in the south of Barcelona. Huh? Or you should be able to see that they you know, rented not a, you know, a Hyundai, but a Mustang convertible when they were on holiday last time in California. Huh? And that is why when you meet and you try to screen or interview great sales guys, it's very, very, very important, that's what I do all the time, to really get to know the person. Not only the professional background and so on, but who you really are. Who are you really? What is your, let's say, intrinsic motivation? What are your drives? Or maybe you're a family man. Huh? That's what matters in Brazil, for example. The bigger the family and the often you tr throw up a grill for everybody, the better. So when I was recruiting for a country manager in Brazil, they were most proud telling me that they have a grill for 70 guys. Huh? I know that it's simplifying, simplifying it to money element is a bit maybe too much, but I believe that this is like one of the common denominators. And Mario, who was speaking before me, he also said that when it comes to sales, money is the, is the common currency. So this is like really crucial, really crucial. Of course, you get it in every book and in any course, but I never understood the importance of that. Six uh, first sales guys, two failed. Okay. Um, on the list of things that I think uh, make sense to, to really focus on when, when recruiting your, your first sales guy is, is the list of those three elements. How many times did you see a company that released a product and it was spot on? Ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know how many pivots we did. We, we stopped counting. Huh? So you need someone who is extremely adaptable, not only a great salesperson, but you know, a beautiful mind, mental capabilities, intellect, whatever you call it, uh, it's really, really crucial. It's crucial also because your company is going to be growing. How amazing would it be if the first sales guy that you hire grows with the company? Almost as a co-founder, right? I mean, who will know the company better? Who will love it more? Huh? What if you hire the first sales guy and then two months or two, two years down the road, you need to hire a more senior guy because he's not able to grow. Huh? So intellect is super, super important. The other two is kind of self-explanatory. If, if, if you're ambitious, then you're putting your intellect to work. Huh? So ambitiousness, I don't know. There are so many things that you can think about when it comes to profiles of guys. Where do you come from? Poor area or rich family? Huh? Who are your friends? Which university do you go to? Were you poorer or richer than the other guys? I know I'm doing it from a C perspective, let's say, where we're still money is a big factor for us and so on. But I believe that there are uh, you know, counterparts that we can use in, in other cultures where you can really see that that person has something to prove uh, in this world. So ambition is super important and passion to sales. It's amazing to have an intelligent and ambitious sales guy who loves nothing but surfing. He needs to have, have passion to selling. 
Okay, uh, when it comes to the uh, 100 sales, the uh, answer to the question is a little bit simpler, because by then you really should know your profile of an ideal sales guy. And if you think about Poland, in our case, this is it. I know it's really um, controversial and stuff, and uh, yeah, sharing it here with you um, uh, with all the openness, uh, but this is the truth. Huh? Of course, it doesn't mean that we reject CVs based on that criteria. But if you look at our sales guys, 80% of those, they're like this. Huh? The right mix of, of everything. Again, we are talking about the um, scaling, the 100 sales guy. And the second thing, um, as you scale, um, your optimism grows. And there could be a tendency to lower the bar. Don't ever, ever do that. We did it in Italy, and it fucked up our business, really. We lost at least six months. Huh? We had uh, two quarters in which the rotation was like 60% or something like that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just showing to you um, like um, actual work in progress kind of Google Sheet, uh, which we call like an interview form, uh, where uh, we evaluate every candidate. There are a couple of evaluators. There, is, um, there are questions, there are areas, um, there is a phone screening and then the further stages and so on. Lowering the bar is very, very dangerous and it's very, very tempting huh? because you want to scale faster, faster, faster. And then suddenly you realize how much money you're losing because of uh, lowering the bar. So these would be my hints when it comes to who are you really looking for, for the first sales guy and for the 100th sales guy. Now let's think about where to look for those guys. Now, of course, it's important to understand what kind of profile of the person you're looking for, and then it can determine you know, the industries and, and all this stuff. But um, if I were to choose from that list, and th that list is by no means complete, but if I were to choose from that list, I would go for active versus passive. The best sales guys, do they really need to? I mean, in general, huh? there are exceptions to the rule, but do really best, the best sales guys, they are needed. No one will let them go. Huh? They are the core to your business. Whenever I talk to Hayes or Merce guys, they all say, I ask them, okay, we have a sales guy that is making like 20K per month, uh, and, and, and I don't feel comfortable with that. And he says, why? It's the best indicator of the condition of your business. If your best sales guy make a lot of money, assuming that your commission system is right, oh my God, it's fantastic. So no one lets great sales guys just change jobs like that. That's why, um, when it comes to recruiting the first uh, salesperson, I have never recruited anyone from a job posting. I don't know how many CVs I have screened uh, of country managers um, that uh, we were hiring. Probably approximately six to 7,000, uh, together with my team. Maybe more, uh, especially in Brazil. It's crazy. It's a big country. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, senior sales guys are not looking for a job. Of course they are but they know how to sell themselves. And we are very, very lucky to have LinkedIn, I believe, and we are very lucky to have GoldenLine or Viade or Xing, uh, depending on which part of the world you're from, um, because you don't need to be a hat hunter to be able to reach those guys. And they really love what I noticed. This is our country manager, uh, Brazil, Carlos Lopez. Uh, we hired him in uh, February, started in May. And look at his profile, beautiful picture, uh, nice keywords, description, some skills. I was doing it really fast, but the profile looks really much, much better live on LinkedIn. So those guys, they know how to sell themselves. What is one of the mottos of, of sales? Huh? People hate being sold to, but they love to buy. So Carlos let me buy him. And the second um, thing that I learned uh, about recruiting the first salesperson is the network. So if you're not able to find someone by yourself, like through LinkedIn or you know, the regular sources, then ask people around. And believe me, guys, huh? you've been around for some time. Uh, you know, I, have, I see people who have beards, I see people who have glasses. <laughs> so I can risk a statement that they're, uh, you've been around. So you know a bunch of people, you know a bunch of businesses. And believe me, that best sales guys, they are known. And if you ask around, then suddenly it might turn out that you will get 
some leads for, for really good sales guys. Another reason why the asking people around for great sales guys is important is because you can get a lot of great references. Even if you found your guy, get 10 references from him. 20, 30, I don't know. And call all of them, of course. Huh? I mean, if, if you're an amazing salesperson uh, and a leader, you should be able to give me 50 maybe, I don't know, depending on the business model, of course, and so on. But network, huh? network. Passive candidates and network. Passive is a shitty word to describe that. There are no passive candidates. Everybody is looking for a job every time. Huh? It just depends on the right offer at the right time. OK. Now, when it comes to the um, 100 salesperson, the situation is totally opposite from my experience. If you headhunt junior sales guys, they're blown away. Huh? They don't know what to do. They think, oh my god, I'm good. Yeah? Someone is writing to me and he's a co-founder or something like that. Jesus, it's crazy. So the expectations grow and so on and so on. What I also notice is that if you approach and uh, hunt junior guys, they have much uh, lower tendency of leaving their current job. Huh? It's very important that when a sales guy makes the move to apply, it already means that he has made a decision to leave his boss, not the company, but the boss. We'll talk about that too. So um, I've, I've had, um, that was also in Italy when, when we had big problems in attracting enough CVs and so on that um, uh, I, I got a lot of rejections. We made like a, I had like a rejection rate of 40% to the offers that we were making to the sales guys. Crazy. Huh? In other countries, it never happened. I mean, maybe up to 10%, not more than that. Huh? So that is why I'm, I'm showing you the, the Polish picture, of course, but uh, there are huge, gigantic job boards all over the place. Huh? There is Indeed, which is not listed, uh, Job Rapido, Info Jobs. Um, in Latin America, there's Cato, Vagas. There's, there's a real bunch of them. So, um, in order to be able to uh, get um, to find the, the, the scaling, um, the, the more salespeople, then I believe that um, uh, setting the nets and getting job boards working for you is the right way. And the second element is a recruitment machine. So what you see is the data for the last less than 18 months, right? So it took us 15,000 candidates to recruit approximately maybe 200, 220 guys. It's crazy. That's only sales, and that's all over the world. And you can see different sources and so on. So there are some analytics to help, but it just says about the amount of work that is needed. So if you're a founder or want to be a founder that wants to scale, then it's really good to be prepared to have a good partner to help you with this stuff. Okay, last but not least, how to attract. And again, with a sales, first sales guy, I think it's tougher than uh, with a following, also by the nature of the search and how you approach those guys. Um, this. I mean, maybe you're very lucky and you're a salesperson yourself. I mean, Product and, and, and sales, they go together very rarely in the same person. And if you look around at businesses um, and startups and so on, how many startups actually have one co-founder? Even Jobs had Wojniak, right? <laughs> so if you scan the market, I mean, if you don't know a salesperson, uh, he's not your friend from university or anywhere else, then this is the way to attract him once you find him and so on. But even if he's your friend, I would risk to say that even if he's your brother, he should still get an equity in the business. Of course, if he's your brother, you would give it anyway. Stays in the family, as they say in Poland. <laughs> but uh, it's really, really crucial because of all the other things that we said earlier. Now, the second thing, which I think matters a lot, and I can echo, where is Mario? Is he gone now? Yeah. Well, he has a long way to go back to Manila. OK. Anyway, the second thing that is really, really crucial is to sell the startup to sell the opportunity to the salesperson. So as a CEO, it's a sales job in order to attract your first senior sales guy. Huh? What are you selling? You're selling? If you are agreeing with the equity thing, then what you're selling is like the, the potential of the business, the size of the market, the traction that you already have. The fact that the person can become a millionaire one day. Huh? Um, so it's really, really crucial to show on real numbers, because if you're talking about uh, an intelligent salesperson, he really knows his stuff. He will do the analytics. 
Last but not least, it's great if it's something big or hot or huge and so on. Huh? Many people are talking about brand 24 in Poland these days. Huh? I bet it's easier when a salesperson makes a research about a brand 24 than if they, as if they were doing research on something else that is far, far less known and far less equal. So there is an element of pride that sales guys want to achieve. And I think that um, if you're able to, again, sell it in, in this way, and are already relatively um, dependable, credible, then it definitely will help. How does it work with the 100 salesperson? It's really basic. It really is. Uh, if you want great sales guys, don't offer trash contracts. No? Just offer good ones. If you want, yeah, I mean, it's, it's correlated. And same with salary. I mean, salary is a big word uh, or a very generic word, but I'm talking about commission, fixed, you know. Uh, all this stuff inside. So this is like what I observed one of the first elements. Now the second element is the boss. Sales, I mean everybody works for a person. I don't work for a company, I work for a person. Everybody of you works for a person. It might be your wife, but it's still a person. <laughs> huh? Why does it help? Because of two reasons. Reason number one is when you're being recruited, you're recruited by that person. If you have an amazing sales leader in front of you, you're going to buy him, right? It's not only about the quality of screening, but you're going to buy that person. He's going to convince you, wow, I want to work with this guy. This is going to be a success. I'm going to learn a lot. The second reason is that people leave. People, like I said, they join for people and they leave because of people. Um, uh, so uh, probably you know the book of, uh, I think, uh, Levi or Levi, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, wrote this book about the seven hidden reasons why people leave and so on. Um, with sales, it's a hundred times stronger. Huh? We've had uh, the Polish sales team for seven years now. There's Severin and Radek who have been sales managers for seven years. It's fucking unheard of huh? to have sales guys for such a long time, especially that everybody knows the success of Znane Lekas in Poland and everybody will, would like to repeat it with those guys. They never left. And it doesn't work that, uh, in, a, in a way that they come for more money and we give them more money. No. Huh? They stay because um, they believe that Konrad is, is the, 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 the leader that they want to work for. Uh, and last but not least, um, this is pretty complicated. I didn't have a lot of time to simplify this thing. But the bottom line is, is that we did an interview with majority of the sales guys that we have in Doc Planner globally. And we asked them what they like and what needs improvement. And then when you look for common grounds, you see that what they need is great colleagues. So we were talking about great sales guys that um, surround them. We were talking about the manager. So they like to be cared about as people, not only as professionals achieving their goals. And last but not least, um, the uh, possibility to progress, to grow. So career paths and so on, as funny as it might seem, those guys need it. They need to see that there is a possibility like that. OK. Uh, the last question that I sometimes get is, um, are we looking for a sales leader? Are we looking for a salesperson? I think we're looking for both. I cannot imagine that you have a, a general that is not able to replace anyone in his army. Huh? I mean, there are so many situations when you need to go to the field with a guy and just show him how it's done. Coach him, show him how it's done, whatever. Huh? Soft or hard style doesn't really matter. So I really believe in that. Um, I love Jack Welsh, and he keeps me <laughs> uh, comforted in moments of hardship, especially when I, failed in when I failed in recruiting. So recruiting is a tough job. Huh? If this guy says that 50% is his conversion rate and he's happy with it, um, then yeah, it's a positive sign for me. Now, three things you can implement tomorrow. If you don't have a great sales leader, you should. So think about it. Uh, that's uh, what um, my advice uh, would be if I were a, uh, a startup owner. Um, uh, equity, so being a partner in the company. And if you're talking about the 100 sales guys, I would, in, I would encourage you to implement an interview form in which the, you will make sure that the speed and quality go hand in hand. And how are we doing the next 10 sales? Well, 10, 10, 10, something like that. And most of the sales that we're doing now is happening through the phone. Guys, so this is it from me. Uh, thanks very much for your attention. Thank you, Lucen, thank you. Perfect.
We'll keep you on stage for one second, and we'll see if we've got any questions in the audience. We've got time for maybe one. Uh, we're running just a little bit over. But um, I want to start. You talked to, I, I kind of like, I love interview forms and having numbers and statistics to back up my gut feelings. At what stage do you think that, you know, is it worth doing from day, from higher number one just to have the structure? Or, you know, is it something that you, you know, you bring in after a certain amount of time or space? Like, I, I'm one of those people that think it's, it, you know, have it to back it up from the beginning. Mm. But is it not worth the time, maybe, or the effort in the very, very start? Yeah, I mean, there are so many easy tools to implement. I would encourage you to measure what you do in the very beginning. If you go to a gym, what do you do? Do you, do you have a plan or what you're going to do? Uh, do you record what you did? Do you modify? Mm -hmm. We use Tableau. There's Google Sheets. Oh, my God. Uh, so as early as you can and as simple as you can, really, uh, and for free <laughs> because it's possible, just do it. Uh, measure what you can uh, because how do you know what to do if you don't know what you did? I agree. Thanks. Can we give a round of applause once again to Lucien? Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Thank you.